Hi, I'm Matt Rosu. I'm Dean of the Sigmund Y School of Business at Susquehanna University and a professor of economics. Welcome back to the series examining the economic lessons from the hit TV show Secession. There's a spoiler warning for this as every video, right? We're going to be talking about the show. This episode of the series, we're going to talk about bargaining and specifically a concept within game theory called the best alternative to a negotiated agreement. Now, bargaining plays a central role within the series. There are many times where there are bargains and negotiations, and in these, it is incredibly helpful to have a strong alternative to a possible agreement. So in game theory, the acronym is BATNA, Best Alternative to the Negotiated Agreement. In game theory, and really with common sense, the stronger your BATNA, or the stronger your alternative is, should a negotiated agreement not occur, the more leverage you have and the better outcome you should see. Similarly, if the counterpart you're bargaining with has a weaker BATNA or a weaker alternative to the negotiated agreement, that should also get you a better outcome. So you want a stronger BATNA or alternative to the negotiated agreement. You want your counterpart to have a weaker BATNA. Now, there's a couple different situations where this really comes up. The first we're going to examine is at the end of season one. And we'll watch the clip right now. What do you care? I don't know if you know, but the caterer I had an issue with died last night. Oh, that's terrible. Did you know? I, I knew. I, I knew because I, I just found out. But uh, it's, a, it's a shock. Uh-huh. So uh, our guys, uh, one of our guys, found a key card to your room, near where this kid went into the water. Oh, yeah. Maybe and he, uh, and, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe he... Amir saw you last night, rather damp. The police are here with Caroline. Right. Let me handle this. I know the guys, they know our guys, they're good guys. Tell Sandy you're out. Go to the desert. Dry yourself out. You have not been yourself. So at the end of season one, Kendall is planning a hostile takeover of his father's company. During a wedding party, however, Kendall is driving with Andrew Dodds. As you see, a deer got in the way, the car swerves, goes into the lake, and Kendall escapes and flees the scene. He thinks he might get away and nobody knows, but his father's team finds his ID there. Now, his father says we can make this all go away, but suddenly has an enormous leg up on the bargaining. Think about Kendall's BATNA. Once the accident happens, if he and his father do not come to an agreement, Kendall's father might inform the police. Therefore, Kendall goes to prison, goes to jail, or potentially, or faces legal charges. Or at the very least, there's press stories about how he was in the car with the person who died in an accident and Kendall walked away from the scene. Didn't inform police, just walked away. All of that is really, really terrible. 
that puts a huge pressure on Kendall to agree with his father, and he drops the hostile takeover bid and comes to an agreement with his father that he will just drop it. Because Kendall's BATNA, the alternative to the negotiated agreement, fell so dramatically, the bargained agreement, instead of getting something for dropping the takeover bid, basically gets nothing, but stays out of jail, which is still a pretty big deal. So that's one example where the alternative to the negotiated agreement really impacts the bargaining within secession. There's another example from season four. Let's watch the clip from season four right now. I like running the ship. I think we're good at it. And I don't want to stop. I mean, do you? Yeah, shut the fuck up, man. We're not selling to you, okay? We're not doing that. We are going to grind you down, man. We are sand in the gears. Every email is going to take like six months. We're all going to spend hundreds of millions of dollars. And in the end, you're going to get bored and move on. It's not happening, okay? Really? Yeah. Thanks for coming. Oh. Hey, it's Matson. Matson. Yep. Yep. Uh, 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 okay. Well, uh, thank you. No. Revised offer. 192. <laughs> Five dollar bump. Okay. Wow, he really wanted ATN. Hey, it's a home yeah. run, boys. Oh, Hail the you. conquering heroes. Your dad would be really proud. Wow. You're, you're welcome. 192. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Very good. Excellent. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's run the numbers and take it to the board. Right. Sure. So Kendall and Roman are in negotiations with Matson to sell the company. They realize, though, they really don't want to sell. The alternative to the negotiated agreement they're in charge right now and they think there's a chance they could stay in charge and they really like this they don't want to sell so their alternative to the negotiated agreement actually is really really high value they don't want the negotiated agreement at all well what does theory predict and what does common sense predict if you do not want to engage in the negotiated agreement because you really like the status quo, it's going to take a lot more money. You know, it's a little more complicated than this because there's boards that are involved, but what we see matches exactly with theory. When Kendall and Roman all of a sudden, they don't want to do it anymore. We see the offer goes up by $5 and everybody else is celebrating the amazing bargaining prowess of Kendall and Roman. What really happened here? Their alternative to the negotiated agreement got to be so high, they didn't want to do it. It required a high offer. And if you notice their expressions in the plane at the end, they don't exactly seem thrilled because they're not thrilled because their alternatives are so valuable to them. So those are a couple examples from the show, a real world example that I've mentioned on this channel before, but it's worth reiterating. I counsel individuals that the best time to bargain over a job offer is when you are still employed at another job. You have much more leverage. Thinking about it, if you are applying for a new job and you're currently at a job, your best alternative is you're still employed at the job you're at now. If you are unemployed at the time though, the alternative is remain unemployed or take the new job offer. Your alternative is much worse and therefore you should expect a lower salary offer in any bargaining situation. Now for college students just graduating, usually of course the students are still finishing up their coursework, the ideal situation is for a student to have multiple job offers and therefore can engage in some bargaining back and forth with one company versus another because there's alternatives available. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please click like and subscribe. These take a little bit of time to put together. So if you like it, uh, it really helps me out if you click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and of course, leave a comment or share it with a friend if you think others would enjoy or you want to mention whether you agree or disagree with some of the analysis. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next video.